Hey everyone, first of all, I want to thank you for all of the comments I received for the previous video. It's overwhelming. I think it has like close to 200 comments by now. And uh, yesterday I tried getting back to many of you, but I felt like doing a follow-up video makes more sense to share my opinion because my opinion is still that arena breakout, like mobile and infinite, it's not pay to win. And I'm going to try to explain why. And no, it's actually not the right phrasing. I'm going to explain why I think it's not pay to win. You can have a different opinion, okay? Because you have different type of experience and you might consider you know, winning different as I do. You might consider pay to win different as I do. But still, I want to share my part of the story and then you can decide if you want to relate to it or not. If you don't like it, you can skip the video or you can stay and listen to what I have to say. To give you a bit of an insight how hot this topic is, let me show you the numbers because you only see the likes. So this video got um, 29 dislikes, approximately 75% uh, in total, you know, like the video. But this is what I expected because, you know, it's a controversial topic. Before I jump into the details, I want to say thank you to all of you who left a comment respectfully. Okay, you can call me a moron. You can say it's ridiculous what I'm saying, but it doesn't really help the conversation. So I'm a person who is going to accept your opinion, even if it's the opposite of mine. So you don't need to be rude or attacking in the comment section. So. I think that first of all, we need to define what winning is in Arena Breakout because that's, that's you know, changing the, the whole perspective of the conversation. And I'm going to share what I think winning is. I think you win the game if you can wipe full lobbies. Okay, you go into Armory and then you are the last man standing. For me, that's the winning part. It's almost like battle royale. So it doesn't really make a difference if you finish like on the hundreds place or the 69th place. I think the winner is the one who is actually winning the game, who finishes first. In Arena Breakout, it means like, I would say two things. You are the last man standing and you can like run around on the map and loot everything and then extract. Or the second option is that you know that there are still players on the map, but your bags are full. You already killed two or three people and you decide to extract and you can safely extract. And the more frequently you can do that, like out of 10 games, if you can extract six or seven times, then you, know, you have my full respect because you are going to be a true winner of the game. And this has nothing to do with your play style, okay? You can be a sniper, you can be a pushy guy, you can be aggressive, you can be tactical or whatever. It, it doesn't matter. I'm just highlighting that for me, winning the game is that you can extract successfully multiple times and being the last man standing. And it's even more ideal if you can do it on a high rank, so on legend, and even better if you can do it in solo mode, okay? Those guys who can pull this off, extracting seven times out of 10 games, being solo on a map like Armory, on legend level, full respect, those are the real winners of the game, not the ones who have a high storage value. Who cares about the storage value? There are many players in the game who have more than 50 million storage value, but they have never reached legend, for example. I think that's not winning, like having a huge storage it's, it's not winning in the game. Obviously, gradually increasing your storage value is one of the objectives, but it's not the primary objective. Until you have enough money and you know stuff to play with, then it doesn't really matter if you have 10 million or 600 million in your storage. Actually, a good friend of mine, Zach Frags, he is really good in the game. He's much better than I am. And his storage value is below 10 million. Why is that? He plays solo, he's aggressive, he enjoys being aggressive, and often he's being ratted. And often he's being outplayed by a team of, of, of like a full squad, like four people attacking him. 
Um, even if that enemy squad is not having high end gear, sometimes there's just not much you can do, but he is really, really good at the game. And then we have players like Kiwi and Yusef. They are often teaming up with others, like people who have like similar skills. And because of that, their storage value is like higher, like 100 million or 200 million. But it doesn't mean that they are necessarily better than Zach Frax. Zach Frax is also very good in the game, despite of having a low storage value. Now that I covered what winning means, at least for me in the game, I can start talking about why I still don't feel that this is a pay to win game. And keep in mind, the primary goal for me is to get better in the game and try to survive, try to be the last man standing. It doesn't mean how many kills I have during the game. I must extract at the end. That's the primary objective. And the secondary objective is to gradually increase my storage value. And I have to find a loadout, something that works for me, which makes that happen. And there's a quick calculation, which I want to show you. It's my default loadout. And as I said last time, I can actually show you that my storage value is at the moment like close to 20 million, which means that I would have the money to run high end gears or higher gears. I, I don't need to stick to T4. OK, I could be doing T5, T6 and stuff like that. Still, my default loadout is this like a T4 armor. Often I'm not even using a helmet. Sometimes I'm using a T4 helmet, sometimes T3. In terms of gun, I'm like more on the lower end of the spectrum. I'm not running like 150K H4s or 100,000 FALs. Like even if I mod the gun, I usually don't go above 50, 60 or eventually 70,000. My default ammunition is T4. I'm not really playing with T5 um, ammunition. Usually I'm running with four grenades and uh, I have some med kits, but not the biggest ones. Taking 10 games as an example, we could say that I'm risking in total one and a half million coin, knowing that my extraction rate is approximately 35%. We can say that I would extract three or four times. I've been calculating with four times, which means that I lose six times. So my total loss is approximately 900,000, which means that in the games where I successfully extract, I need to do at least 225K to make sure that, you know, I'm going to make profit. I think you still don't really see the point I want to make, but I have the same calculation for a high end loadout or higher end loadout, which is like a T5 armor an expensive gun, better ammunition, more grenades, steams, good meds, everything. The calculation looks somewhat different. So let's assume I'm running this kit like for 10 games. And in that case, I'm risking approximately 4 million, okay, compared to the 1.5 million. Let's assume, okay, and here's the thing. Let's assume that because of the better gear, I'm going to extract more often and when i say more often instead of four raids i'm going to extract five times and i need to stop here i need to highlight that this is the point this is the thing i want to tell you guys i've been running t5 multiple times and it's not as different as you think it is i'm still dying like there are many deaths which is because of bad timing or i just mess up or my aim is bad, or I get naded, or I suck at the game, and my T5 armor doesn't save me. It doesn't even matter what gun I have, because often I die without actually shooting at the enemy. Sometimes I peek, and you know I get an instant headshot, and it doesn't matter what type of gun I'm holding. Maybe this is true for the high-end players, like the 0.1% where everybody is having godlike skills and maybe one bullet is making the difference. But for casual players and for players like semi-pro players, casual players, for me, it absolutely doesn't make a difference. So if you say that the game is paid to win, then keep this in mind. Do you really think that by having a better armor and a better gun, you're going to extract like 
eight or nine times out of 10 games, it's not going to happen. Don't forget that even if you're going to have a game where you have one or two extra kills in that game because of having a better gun, but then you still die in that game, then you don't win. You still lose. It doesn't matter. So keep this in mind when you think about the pay to win aspect. For me, T5, T6 and expensive weapons and guns, it doesn't work because it puts me into a situation where I need to do more profit. Like compared to the previous one, I need to do with my default loadout 225k. And if I would run like high end armor, I would need to do at least 500,000 every single successful raid. Otherwise, you're going to go down. Your storage value is going to go down. And, and I cannot perform that. It doesn't work for me. And I also know that it doesn't work for many of the players because this only works if you have godlike aim and you have very good game sense. Your timing is perfect. Eventually, you have good teammates. For example, Monarch, who was commenting, of course, it works for him. He's a professional player, but it's not going to work for majority of the players. If you run good armor, good weapons, then the only thing that's going to happen is that you're going to lose more money. Let me circle back for one second when I talked about the objective of the game. You need to find a loadout that works for you. And this is contradictory. Like the highest possible gear, it might not work for you. Because if you are not that good at the game, you suck at the game like I do, then you know, you're going to lose it and you're going to get frustrated. It's not going to, it's not going to make you win. And this is the point that I want to make. It's not going to win you the game. Even if you win one or two extra games on the long run, you're going to still lose way more if you are dressing up in high end gear. And again, judge me for that. But this is my opinion. It's not just my opinion. It's my experience. Whenever I started playing with T5, and started putting myself into rough situations like playing tons of Forbidden Zone on TV station, I started losing because I'm not that skilled. So this is why I still say that the game is not pay to win. Even if I would pay tons of money, real money, and buy myself thermals, I wouldn't be successful in the game. The only way to get successful in the game is to learn about the game, to master the controls, to have good aim, to have good reactions. That's it. All right, I think we covered that. There are two additional things which I want to talk about. One of them is the cases, okay? Like many of you have been complaining that it's not free, it's temporary, or you need to subscribe. It's not permanent, basically, and it's unfair, and that's a pay to win factor. Actually, like considering everything I said about the winning, what I consider as winning. Do you think the composite case, the bulletproof case, is going to help you winning the fights? Is it helping you in any way to have successful extractions in the game? I think no. The only thing the composite case can do is to like ease your pain and you're going to have less suffer because you're going to die. And if you have something in your composite case, then, you know, happy days because you're going to have money eventually if you find something, then you're going to have money to play one more game or two more games or whatever. And don't forget, in the first video, I was actually recommending to having a composite case. But even if you have a composite case, it's not going to help you, you know, winning the game because winning the game, again, for me is being the last man standing, being good at PvP. Uh, being better than others. That's the only way which is going to make you successful on the long run. And I'm not talking about one specific game. I'm talking about the long run. Okay. You cannot be lucky every time. You're not going to find red items every raid anyways. So the composite case, I absolutely recommend that. And here's a side note. Somebody was saying that it's ridiculous that I was comparing, um, you know, the prices to my bills and all kind of stuff. But are we actually complaining about like, you know, you know, what is it? $5? Because if that's the case, then, you know, that's a different story. Are we complaining about the price of the composite case or are we saying that it's a pay to win factor? Because originally, you know, I recorded this to address the pay to win. I think the composite case is not going to help you win the game. You know, it's beneficial to have it, 
but it's not going to help you during the fights. On the other hand, we can also talk about you know, the price of the composite case and the subscriptions. I'm just saying that I don't expect such a game to be fully for free. I mean, it's you know ongoingly developed. There's a maintenance cost, servers, the dev team, and all kind of stuff. So I was just referring to the fact that $5 on a monthly basis or $10, I think it's fine. Somebody has to pay. Otherwise, you know, those poor developers are going to get fired and they're not going to have salaries. So I think it's not overpriced. I mean, the composite case, at least the two by two case, I think it's an acceptable price. Okay. But again, you can have a different opinion. You can say that it should be permanent and it should cost like $50. You buy it once and then it's okay. If I have to pay $10 to play this game on a monthly basis as a service, I'm perfectly fine with that. And it actually also depends on how you look at it, because we could say that it's normal that if you want to get a service, you pay for it. Okay, because usually the assumption is that we should get everything for free. But we could say that this team is offering you this service for $10 per month if you go with the Elite and the Composite case, but on top, they are offering a free to play experience for those who, who don't want to pay. They can still be around, they can still play the game, but they're not going to have all of the benefits. It's like attending a concert and the free to play players are outside of the fence. They can still see and still hear, but it's more ideal, you know, if you get a ticket and get inside. Again, it's my opinion, okay? But original topic was to address whether this game is paid to win. And my final conclusion is that still, if you pay and if you buy armor and weapons for real money, it's not going to help you winning the game. The only way to win this game is to put in time, practice, understand the guns, be tactical, be sneaky or pushy or whatever works for you. And then, you know, wipe the lobbies. And now the circle closes. At this point, you're going to say that, but if I have a better armor and better gun, then I'm going to be more successful. Well, it's true in a way where you have already 500 hours in the game or more. Okay. You're not going to be better in the game. If you have 10 hours or 50 hours in the game, it's not going to make a difference. Even if you get lucky in one raid, you're going to lose it anyways. So it doesn't actually make you win the game. That's still my opinion. Um, and again, feel free to disagree. And the last thing I want to talk about is PC players versus mobile players and the fact that PC players are not accepting like microtransactions and all kinds of stuff. And I respect that. I've been hearing that for years already. Um, and my recommendation would be the following. Don't buy anything in the game, okay? Don't buy coin, don't buy anything. Just start playing the game, play 20 raids or 30 raids, okay? And then be honest to yourself, and whenever you die, then judge the situation. Like, ask yourself that, did I die because that other guy who shot me, he was someone who was spending real money on his gear, and this is why I died. If I would have had better gear, I would have shot him, and then I would have extracted. And then you can answer this big pay-to-win question yourself, okay? Anyways, that's all I wanted to cover. I'm not going to do any follow-ups to this. So I'm just going to do my thing with Arena Breakout Mobile. Still, thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for listening to my opinion. And, uh, you know, as always, comments and opinions are welcome. Shoot, loot, subscribe. See you in the next one. Shady out. Bye.